Hey everyone, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through a report that I built that lets you extract report level measures from a live connected PBIX file. Now this is really valuable if you want to easily separate out the already built measures contained within a tabular model you're connecting to and any measures that were added to the PBIX file itself that is on top of the original model. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. Now before we begin, I just want to quickly recap what a live connection means in Power BI. In Power BI, a live connection is whenever a Power BI desktop file connects to an external data model. And this means that it does not contain a cached data model. And typically, this is when you are only concerned with report authoring and you're not wanting to build a model itself. As you can see here, the Power BI desktop file connects to the live queries sent to a single model, which in this case can either come from SQL Server Analysis Services, Azure Analysis Services, or more recently, the Power BI datasets. It does not contain any local tables or any local relationships. The one thing you can add on top of this model though, as I've already discussed, is report level measures. And that is the report that I have built that can be extracted out of these PBIX files that you have and have either built or have taken over as a developer. So now with this context, let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So I have in front of me an example of a live connected dataset. You can see that down here, it says connected to live Power BI dataset. In this case, a demo dataset based off of Contoso data in my workspace that I have under my tenant. And notice that for most of the measures, if I select on them, no formula bar here shows up. However, for certain measures that are built in this PBIX file, all of that information still does show up here. So I've actually just created a couple of example ones, and those are typically just done when the developer normally comes in here and adds a measure on top of the model just because the available metrics aren't available in the core tabular model itself. Good example maybe is there is a measure for actuals minus budget and the manager happens to want a measure for budget minus actuals, which doesn't exist. You can come into here, select new measure and write a custom one. But I won't go into the details on the measure creations themselves. That's not the point of this video. What I want to show you is how do I easily extract those measures from this list into a nice report without having to go and copy and pasting a ton. So I'm going to actually switch over now to a different report and show you the results of that. So the output of the report itself and the extraction looks like this. I built a basic report page here that actually has a table that as you can see, has all of this detail about the information from each measure that I wrote in that PBIX file. And this could be one, five or 500 of them. It will extract it directly out of a Power BI desktop file. I'll explain more how it does that directly in a minute, but you can see the nice output here where you have measure name, what the expression is, and then a bunch of other metadata as well. How many measures that were referenced here? This is really cool because you can see as an example here, report level measure four has actual variance to budget plus actual amount running total variance to budget. It doesn't really matter what the expression is. I just threw a bunch of random examples together. But the point of that is there are two other measures inside of that measure that are referenced. So that gets two rows and it gets the home table where the referenced measure exists. In this case, the running total variance to budget plus the actual amount variance to budget. So you'll actually get a unique row per referenced measure that is used in the actual expression itself. So you can kind of see a bit of data lineage that comes with this that I was able to extract out of it. You do have a data type, which for all the ones that I extracted were kept at three. So I'm not actually sure when that might change or not, but that will be useful. Plus a bunch of other stuff in here, such as error message, hidden, whether or not there are any unrecognized references, and a few of the things that I'm not 100% certain on what they exactly do, but I included anyways, just because the data was there. And some stuff around formatting, even true and false around some thousands, separators, currency symbols, and a bunch of other stuff. Plus I added a bunch of filters here at the top in case you wanted to filter off of some of those. But the goal being is really just a printed list and then a measure count of those unique measures that are in your model, especially those live models with uniquely created report level measures in there. Now I want to just skirt on the topic of the transformations that were used in here. This will be a file available to download on my website. And for now it's going to be free that may or may not change in the future, but it will be in the links below in my files store available for download. And you can actually plug and play your data directly in there. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to come up here to transform data. And there are three things in here and I want to talk about each individually. You'll see that the actual table export, the one that you've seen in the report is here. There are a lot of layers in terms of the extraction from the file contents, unzipping PBX file, getting all the way down to essentially this final table. At some point, I might make a video that walks through all of this. That will require more time than I have available at the moment. 
So for now, the report will be available to use, but I'll leave a little bit of the magic still covered. The things that I want to make very clear though are right over here, the PBIX file name. You'll see this here, and what this has is the string where the file is located. In this case, my file, that is a live connected file, is located on the root C drive, and this will require this full extension here. This is actually saved as a PBIT file, Power BI template, and if you read this over here, you will see that it asks to provide the full file path of the folder and Power BI desktop file, including the PBIX extension. So as long as you update this here, it will automatically refresh for you. Now I do want to call out this open zip file. What this is is a parameter. You come over here to the advanced editor just to show you some of the stuff behind the curtains. Now I'm not going to claim that I built this. This actually came about through a little bit of an investigation. So Stephanie Bruno, as you can see, has a tweet where she mentions creating a file that lets you see the columns and measures that are used versus not used. And interestingly, Marco Russo responded by creating a new version of this file that does not require you to change the PBIX file to a .zip extension. It automatically unzips it for you. So Marco Russo, shout out to you, thanks for this. I was actually able to copy that out of it and use your exact same function in my file as well. So that way nobody has to change the file extension. That's what we're seeing in front of us right here. So this beautiful code was the one provided by Marco Russo for the report for Stephanie that is now used in my report. So kind of nice unintentional cross collaboration there, but it works very well. And links to both Stephanie's report plus the tweets as well where Marco provided this are going to be in the description below. But like I said, most of the magic I'm not going to explain into here because some of it is a little advanced, even some of this stuff for me. But it's really useful and I'm familiar enough with Power Query to know how to build the rest of it. And the result for you is that all you have to do is come in, make sure this file path extension is correct for the file name parameter here, which feeds into this which then will give you this wonderful report right here. And I'll show you now is what happens when you open the Power BI template file. And this is essentially the prompt you'll be given when opening the template file that you can, again, download from my file store. That link is available in the description below. And it will ask you to provide the file path extension. In my case, that was the C drive with the report name and then .pbix gets included. So full extension and full file path that goes into here and then click load. The report will automatically populate for you. So in this case, let's go ahead and run that. I'm going to put the full name of the report, extension, and file path in here. I'm going to click load. And let's just go ahead and watch that populate automatically. Beautiful. And as you see, it pops right in. And that's all you need to do. And again, at some point on a future date, I do promise to go through and actually walk through every step that I did in here in more detail, but that will take a longer video. So for now, this report will be available to use and consume, and it will be free from my file store download. And that about covers it for today's video. If you liked this video, please click or smash that like button below. And if you have anything to say about this video or a comment for a future video, please add that to the comment section down below. And if this is your first time onto my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.